Welcome back to another episode of Eat Meat and Question Everything. Hello, everybody. Okay, we're doing a solo episode today. And you know what? This wasn't even planned. And things look a little differently today, too. I'm sitting on my couch. If you're just listening to this and not watching on YouTube, I'm sitting on my couch. Um, I sound a little congested. <laughs> I'm in my pajamas. There might be some, you know, car traffic in the distance. Hopefully, you can't hear that. But I just had some things I wanted to share about this whole book process. So I've got my trusty notes right here, and we're just going to get into it. And hopefully, you know, there's probably going to be some mistakes. I feel like I have to point this out every time. Like, I'm not going to edit this. <laughs> I don't have time to rewatch this and clip out any dead space. So I'm just going to, we're just going to go with the flow. So bear with me. Okay. <clears throat> we are. How many months into this are we? I don't even know. I feel like I got contacted in July, maybe. So we're a good, you know, seven, eight, nine. I don't know. I didn't know there would be math this morning. Nine months into this process. And what word comes to mind? What a doozy, I think. And I always thought a doozy meant like a bad thing, but I think it can also just mean like what a wild and crazy ride. I don't know. Maybe I'm using it wrong. But I am <laughs> insanely stressed out. And what I'm trying to do right now is just like lean into the gratitude that I have. And, you know, I, I listen to, I'm trying to like replay what Jeff tells me. He's like, it's not, well, I mean, this sounds a little dismissive, but it's not like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, it's okay. You know, you're doing just fine. Like, cause I'm easily overwhelmed. And, like in the grand scheme of things, like it really isn't that serious. You know, he's like, you only have one thing to do, but I'm like, I don't, I have eight things. He's like, but just focus on one at a time. So I'm really working on not spiraling <laughs> and I haven't been that successful at that. Um, the last few weeks have been really rough. So <clears throat> let's just get into it. I just want to talk about this entire process, what it looks like, from day one of getting the email to where we are right now, um, what it looks like with you know meetings and contracts and recipe development and edits and all that. So I just wanted to share it, not only for those of you who have questions and are curious, but kind of like for me too, like I want to be able to look back at this and <laughs> because maybe I'll block, I'll black out all of this. <laughs> I'll block it out of my memory. So just so I can be reminded on what the process was like. <clears throat> and excuse me while I probably clear my throat 87 times. Okay, so they, my publishing company, I have not yet said who they are because we're just not ready for that yet. And I don't even want to say why because then it's going to give you guys some ideas. So I haven't shared yet. You know, once we announce the cover, pre-sales are open, then you'll know who it is. But they found me on TikTok, which is surprising because, <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't say this because I don't want them to regret working with me, but that is like one of the most hated platform. Like I am the most hated on that platform. Um, so I don't know how many of those followers are actually like genuine, you know? So the fact that they're like, oh, she's doing great on here. Let's give her a book deal. <laughs> like, uh, Thank you, haters, for helping me, me with that. Um, and when I first got that email from them, I was, I couldn't even speak. Like my mom, I remember she was sitting at my table. I like sat down on the floor and I'm like, I didn't even know how to like start telling her because I had months ago looked up publishers because I'm like, okay, I want to do a cookbook eventually. Like it's going to probably just be, maybe I'll do like my own ebook or, you know, something like that. Okay. So much for not editing. I just got a text from my mom and I just had to make sure that everything was okay since she has my kids. So what was I talking about? Okay. Yes. I have looked them up because I was like, okay, so maybe I'll do a cookbook. It'll be an ebook. What would happen if I were to work with like a publishing company? So I like snooped around and saw what was out there, you know, did some research on shopping your book around, but I remember telling Jeff, and I even left this in a voice note for somebody. I don't remember who I left it to, but I remember finding it, doing a screen record and sharing what I said like in my stories on Instagram because I literally put it out there. I want to do a book, but I know 
like I wouldn't be able to do it on my own in a timely fashion. I'm like, I need a team. I need somebody to give me deadlines. I need someone to like be on my butt to get this done. Otherwise, if I do it on my own, like uh, it's going to take a while. And you know what? Normally people take a while anyways, even if they're working with a publishing company, but we'll get to that <coughs> later. So I was already aware of like who they were. So when I got an email from them, I'm like, holy crap, like this is amazing. So we had our initial meetings. We talked about the concept and what would it be. And then they went back and forth with their team. And we decided like that was a great idea. It was a good fit. We're going to move forward. So we signed the contracts and then we got started. Well, maybe not we. I got started and I started diving into um, recipe development. And back to like the deadline though. So most people when they're doing a book, like they take like a good like one year, two years, maybe two years, including all um, the editing time. So they asked me what my deadline would be. Like they're like, if you want to take six months, or two years, like that is up to you, whatever you need. For me, I'm like, yeah, a year, two years would be amazing because then you have all this time in the world, it's not stressful. But I'm like, this needs to get out there. Not that it would be old news in two years, but it's like people need this now. So I'm going to do it as quickly as I can. So that would be, I gave myself a six month deadline, which was absolute insanity. (laughs) But it happened. We made it happen. So I turned all my recipes in at a six month deadline and now we're just getting started um on all the on all the edits which is wild in itself so did the deadline um for the recipe creations you know how i even like came up with stuff a lot of people are like where do you get these ideas and honestly it's like old favorites that i just want to carnivorize um and that's pretty much it so getting inspiration on pinterest and then thinking like okay how can i make this carnivore friendly and then with that comes a lot of testing a lot of tweaks a lot of feedback from my recipe testers some tears (laughs) like it's a lot of work and then the photos um i don't have a team doing this for me i did all my photos so keep that in mind when you see my book I am not a food stylist. I am not a food photographer, but I had to be one. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting, like even just showing up on social media, like I'm sharing my food. I share recipes. But in order to show up on social media these days, you also have to channel your inner Steven Spielberg. So it's like you need to learn how to do video, even though maybe that's not your strong suit or even like what you're interested in. So the fact that I had to do my own photos is... Um, a little wild to me. So I I don't know. It's just, (laughs) what am I going to do? Pay $50,000 for a photographer to do everything, you know? So a lot of people I know that I follow in the blog world have shot their own and then maybe like in the future, then they, when they're successful and have the budget, you know, they hire the team to do all the photographs for you. So when you see my book, Be Gentle, I did my best. Um, And then the next step is, you turn everything in, all your written recipes and all the pictures. And so that's what I did at my six month deadline. I celebrated being done with that part. I thought that was going to be the most difficult part. And now I can lay in bed and do all my editing on the computer. Um, joke was on me. Who knew that that was just going to be the beginning of all this work? So <clears throat> now we're at the editing part. And I work with two editors and everything's done in a Word document and the changes are tracked. So if I make changes, it shows it in a different color so they know what I have added. You can highlight things you're saying and ask questions like there's comments on the side. So they send everything back and like chapter at a time. So whatever I sent over, they send it back. And it's like entirely red. (laughs) And they've also, like, in the beginning of this process, sent over, like, a 70-page document on how to write a recipe. But when you've never really done that, like, it's a lot of information and it's a lot of little things. Like, when I tell you my editors are thorough, they are thorough. And things are consistent throughout the book. And little things like, okay, add tallow to the pan. Well, you can't add something if that's the first thing you're putting in. You're not adding it to anything. So it's 
put tallow in the pan or place. So like little things like that. Um, so they're editing my grammar. They're organizing how things are listed. Um, so little things like that. They're asking questions for clear directions, like for the method. So a lot of these, I'm like, well, I don't know because I made that six months ago. I don't remember like blend until smooth. Was it smooth? Was it chunky? So I'm retesting a lot of things to better give the answer. And as I'm retesting things, I'm second guessing myself. I'm like, wow, okay, yeah, this was great, but could it be made better? So, you know, I'm just in my head and getting in my own way. And I've actually redone a couple recipes. I've made a few tweaks, but it's like, I feel like that could go on forever and ever. Like, there's like Jeff reminded me, there's no one brownie recipe out there. There's no one cake recipe. You know, there's a million variations to things. So at one point I just, you just need to stop, you know, because you could go all the rest of your, of your life tweaking and making changes to one single recipe. So <clears throat> that's where we are right now. We are still deep into the edits. Um, and each edit, like each recipe, you probably go back and forth. Like I would say anywhere between four to seven times. I feel like four is being generous. Probably like seven to eight times, honestly, um, to get it all nice and cleaned up. So we still have a few weeks to go on all that. And then it will go. So I'm working with two editors right now. Then it will go to another editor who has fresh eyes, who hasn't seen any of this yet, and they will look through everything. And then I'm also assuming there's going to be another round where I'm looking through everything again too, whether that's on the computer or maybe printed. I'm not sure. I've seen other people with their books, like get it just like loosely printed and they're marking it through that way. So that is coming up. Um, <clears throat> I will say what is in my book. So it will be a tangible copy. Unfortunately, it won't be a hard cover. Um, I'm not sure why I should ask. Um, from what I've seen of all the books they do, they're all paperback anyway, so there must be a reason why they don't do hardcover. So mine will be tangible, but it will be paperback. There's going to be 75 recipes, and yes, a lot of them are going to have dairy because I feel like that's one of the major ways of keeping this creative and sustainable, but there will be recipes without because I am aware of those of you that don't have dairy. Uh, there's going to be like a little carnivore 101 section. I'm going to share my story. There's going to be some front matter information. So little things like about the kitchen tools or, you know, why I'm using certain fats and what are good for like the heat. So like little things like that, like just extra like notes, if you will. Um, grocery staples, kitchen tools, meal plans, and then a shopping list for the meal plan. So that's everything that's going to be in the book. What else is going on recently is I just had my photo shoot done and I'm so excited. They are working on some cover mock-ups. So hopefully I will be able to see like some of the things that they're doing soon. So that will be fu fun. Um, <clears throat> gosh, I need to stop saying um. Pre-sales will be soon. I would guess maybe within the next couple of weeks. All we're really waiting on for pre-sales to start is to get that cover photo done. And it might not even be the final one. Like this could just be like the mock-up is what we share and maybe we make changes, but we just need something and then we can promote pre-sales. And let's talk about why they are important. That I said that weird. Why they are important for you and for me. So pre-sales, okay, everything that is sold between now and the publishing date all counts as far as, you know, the like say New York Times bestseller. <clears throat> so usually that's like, you know, the first week or whatever of your sales, but all the pre-sales count towards that. It shows um, different stores, like how well this is projected to do. So it could be deciding factors on if a store wants to carry it in their store and not just on the website. So, you know, if someone's having crazy pre-sales, well, stores are going to want to, you know, carry that in their store. Um, when you buy pre-sale, like say you go on to Amazon, you will not be charged until it ships, but you will also be locked into whatever the lowest price goes. So say you buy it for 30 bucks or whatever. I don't even know what it's going to cost, honestly. Say you buy it for 30 bucks and then 
a month later it's on sale for 20 bucks. Well, you will get that $20. So it locks you into the lowest. You don't pay until it ships, but from my understanding is it will ship the day before publishing day. So that way on publishing day, you will have it in your hands. And what am I working on right now? Okay, so I do have a few events coming up where I will be cooking in, let's see, the end of April, and it crosses over to the beginning of May. I will be at the Wired for Healing retreat in the Smoky Mountains. I will be overlapping. There's two back-to-back retreats. I will be overlapping both of those. Um, Let's see who's going to be there. Dr. Baker, Kelly Hogan, Dr. Kiltz, Sally Norton, like those are like you know, the big hitters, and then a a bunch of other like amazing people. So I will be cooking my bread recipe there with my friend Serena from Carnivore Revolution. And then at KetoCon, I will also be doing a cooking demo there. And I haven't said what I'm cooking there, and I don't know if I will, but it's going to be a brand new recipe from my book. So we're working on, you know, getting fun little recipe cards printed out for that right now too. And okay, so this Oh, it just, this is so bizarre to say out loud. I feel like a celebrity. (laughs) I will be meeting with my publicist soon. Like how wild. So I do have like a PR marketing lady that I've been in contact with this whole time. But soon I am going to be meeting the publicist that will be handling the promotion for this book, which is just wild. So I don't know all that's going to happen in the future with that, but I think that's what we're going to talk about with her. We're going to talk about pre-sales and I know they will be, you know, trying to get me out there. So on other people's podcasts, like they did say, we can't promise you'll be on Good Morning America, but like some, we will be pitching you for that. So, oh my gosh, could you imagine? I don't think my anxiety would be able to handle that. Um, And then also what will happen is there will be advanced copies of this book. So I will be sending it to, you know, some of the head honchos in this space and whatever, and not even just like the carnivore space, but like health and wellness, like you don't have to be carnivore to use this book. You just need to eat meat, you know? So we'll be sharing with that, with them, getting it into their hands and hopefully, you know, they'll want to share it because the whole point of this is to get this book and as many people's hands as we can to help them out. You know, some of the things that might make someone not want to try this, like, how can I only eat meat forever? It's like, well, you can have dairy too. And let me help you make this creative and sustainable. So I want to be able to help people with this book and stick to this way of eating. And it's just a great way also to get the message out that this way of eating is available. If you are not feeling well, come try carnivore, you know? So it's even great for people that eat a standard American diet. If you love me, great, buy my book. (laughs) Um, Publishing day will be in fall. I don't have an exact date, I think because things can change, but right now it is set for October. I don't even know if I've said that on social media yet. I keep saying fall, so you might be the first to hear that it is October for right now. Okay, to wrap it up, I have asked, I have been asked, will you do this? Again, will you ever make another book? Um, I think I'm too deep in it right now to give that answer. Well, I have an answer, but (laughs) I think I should um, not settle on that. It's almost like childbirth, you know, like you, after a few years, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Let's do it again and have another baby. So right now, since I'm in the thick of it, I'm like, I couldn't imagine doing this again. And and never say never, um, but man, it's, It's been not only stressful, but it has taken away time from my family. And I want to say it's worth it because, I mean, this has been a lifelong dream. I've, you know, cooked forever. And so having this opportunity is so amazing, but it has come at the expense of I'm looking around at my disaster of a house. You know, everything else has been done half ass, I feel like. You know, my my house is (laughs) in shambles. My kids haven't had me 100% which I feel like is fine. You know, we do homeschool, so they're here a lot. Whereas I'm realizing now like, okay, if they did go to school all day, then I wouldn't see them anyways. Not that I'm not seeing them all day, but you know what I mean? I'm trying to give myself a little bit of grace. Like, oh, well, if they were at school, that's when you would be getting this done anyway. So it just seems like time's being taken away from them because they're always here and around me. Um, So yeah, I... 
I, I'm not going to say I would never do another book because who knows, in a few years, I might have all these recipes where it's like, all right, at least maybe not even creating new ones for a book, but maybe putting them all together for an ebook or something. But we'll see. I mean, this has this is definitely a bucket list item. Um, it, for those that don't know, like I've been cooking for a long time. I used to be a chef on yachts. I had my own little catering business for like a minute before I got knocked up, <laughs> knocked up on, on purpose. I feel like that sounds, but you know what? Before we started our family, I was doing that um, after the boats. And I've showed up on social media for a long time um, sharing low carbon keto options before I was carnivore. Uh, no one just really cared. <laughs> I didn't get any, well, I had a little bit of growth, but like all like the growth came from carnivore, I think, because it's so controversial. But yeah, a lot of, a couple years of sharing low carb keto recipes um, with no bad comments. It was wonderful. And I feel like there was, oh yeah, one more thing. Like <clears throat> I, I want to be more than just recipes. I don't want to just be like a food account. You know, I love doing those like vlogs and stuff. So I don't want to just like, what's the word? Not rabbit hole myself, pigeonhole, corner myself. What's the word? Um, and just be like a recipe and cooking page. Like I am so much more than that. And I want to share that side of my life and just even like the lifestyle of carnivore. You know, if I'm not sharing recipes all the time, at least sharing like, oh, we're just having steak, but this is what our lifestyle looks like. This is what our day looks like eating this way. Cause some people just, I don't know, like maybe don't understand like how we can eat this way and be happy. I don't know. So that's where I'm at right now. I want to kind of expand things a little bit more and like just share the lifestyle, share behind the scenes um, and not pigeonhole. Is that right? <laughs> and not pigeonhole myself into just being, um, you know, who to go for, for recipes and whatnot. So whew, I think that was all. I covered everything on my notes. Let me know if you have any more questions on all this. And that's it for now. I need to go cough and have a drink of water blow my nose. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just so gross and just, I'm, maybe I'm too honest and overshare a little bit too much. But anyways, you guys are amazing. I love you so much and I'll see you next time.